Hello, everyone, and welcome to the season debut of the Kelly Wells Show. I'm Andrew Joyce, your host, and I'm joined by your head coach, Kelly Wells, head coach of the University of Pikeville Bears, entering his 11th season at the helm of the University of Pikeville men's basketball team, uh, a former winning player at Rowan County, uh, going on to the Sweet 16 there, a state championship coach at the Sweet 16 at Mason County, and, of course, NAI National Championship at the UPike in 2011, also the NAI National Coach of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, our coach, Kelly Wells. Welcome in, Coach. Hey, Andrew. Great to be here. So thrilled to get the season going again with our coaches show. We've got a lot to talk about. We've had a lot of action, so we uh, can't wait to dig in. Indeed. Of course, uh, the we debut the Kelly Wells show, but already 13 games in, and we're still looking at the 1st of December down the road on the ca- on the calendar. How tough is that for a coach uh, coming in, getting your players prepared, a late practice start, and then you've got games that mean something. You've played two Mid-South Conference games. Yeah, it's really unique, uh, I guess is the best word for it. I don't. Everybody's got to do it, so I don't mind sure. uh, the facts that we have to, but it, it certainly puts us in a different situation of having to be ready early and when you have nine new faces along with returners, it takes some time to gel and – uh, as I tell everybody, we're a work in progress, and don't uh, don't judge us on what we look like right now. Although we are 11 and two, and there'd be a lot of people in the country that would beg to be 11 and sure. two right now. But we uh, we are a work in progress, and we're trying to figure out who these guys are and kind of what they do best. And every day is a learning experience. With the season debut of the show tonight, we'll talk about those newcomers to the program, top uh, returning players to the program as well, and we'll have a special guest. We'll meet uh, one of the coaches, a guy who's been around the program for some time, but reintroduced to the community, uh, one of the assistant coaches at the University of Pikeville, and we'll preview upcoming games. You're still in conference play. That has begun. And then, oddly, you've got a little bit of a break in the schedule with the month of December, and uh, we'll talk about that tonight. One action-packed half hour of the Kelly Well Show. It will be, with, be brought to you every Wednesday from here on out. Presented by Appalachian Wireless. We're live from Buffalo Wild Wings, a special Tuesday night edition tonight as the Bears are on the road t- tomorrow night traveling to Marietta, Georgia to take on Life University. From here on out, we'll be on Wednesday nights, and you're invited to join us there. Coach Kelly Wells, uh, before we go any further, let's talk about the newcomers to the team, those that may not have seen the team play this year. Talk about those newcomers and what they mean. Well, we, we've got a, a wide variety of different positions, different people from different places, uh, and, and trying to gel that and get that team chemistry is what we've been really focusing on a lot. Uh, some of those guys are, are Darian Leslie uh, from Huntsville, Alabama. He has really been – one of the hardest workers we've got. He'll remind you a little bit of Christian Leach that was here before, uh, probably very similar in, in game style, and hopefully he'll have the same production as Christian had. But he's been uh, just a joy to be around. Uh, another one of the wings we brought in is Antoine Baker from Louisiana, who, who's still trying to figure out everything we're doing, but a great athlete for us, plays extremely hard. Uh, we're very, very pleased with his progress and where he's at. Just going down the list here, Desmond Metter, Phoenix, Arizona, uh, had an ACL about a year and a half ago, and he's still trying to get himself through that, but one sure. of our most athletic guards that we have. And, again, we're trying to figure out where he fits best position-wise, uh, but he continues to grow every single day. And all three of those uh, guys are around the 9-point, 10-point scoring per game. So uh, all three of those wings give us some great production in there. You know, as we go down, we've got a freshman, Jordan Perry, who is – uh, had some freshman nights, but he's also had some nights he didn't look like a freshman. Sure. And some of those ups and downs are going to come, but he's a 3,000-point high school scorer. He's going to figure it out. It's going to click very quick for him. And a coach's son, he knows what, what to expect from uh, all aspects of the basketball game. So we're excited about uh, the production he's going to bring to us. Uh, R.J. Freeman is a transfer senior, 6'9", left-handed uh, more of a floating post player, but very good, very athletic, and he gives us a lot of, of double-double potentials, double points and double-figure uh, rebounds. So he's got to continue to grow, but he's learning, and uh, certainly his finesse is something that brings to the table. We've got to work on his physical play a little bit more. And then uh, get Chase Parsley, local kid who redshirted last year, but right. he's still a redshirt freshman sure. for us. Uh, getting about 18 minutes a game, doing some great things for us. And he's growing in his game every single day. And his sidekick coming in is R.J. Colbreth, 
also a transfer guard, has two years left. Uh, and Arze's had some great minutes. He against Shawnee State was player of the game and hit some big threes for us down the stretch. So, as you can tell, we've got a long list of new guys. Sure. Uh, we're very proud of those guys. And obviously the, the uh, returners are really the base of what we're trying to do. Uh, and we're trying to get everybody else to kind of fit in chemistry-wise. You pike 11 and 2 on the young season with those new guys trying to bond and gel and create team, team chemistry with the returning players. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk about the returning players to the U-Pike program. You're tuned to the Kelly Wells Show presented by Appalachian Wireless. We are live from Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back in. It's the Kelly Wells Show. We're talking University of Pikeville Bears basketball live from Buffalo Wild Wings. And we will be here the remainder of the season every Wednesday night at this time. And you're invited to join us here. Uh, Food specials and catch up to date on all things going on around the U-Pike men's basketball program. Coach Kelly Wells, we talked about newcomers to the program in the last segment. We talk about returners because they are the core of U-Pike's program, year in and year out, those returning guys. No doubt, and it's no exception with this group. We've got a bunch of, uh, of guys returning that we really fell in love with. We like what they're bringing to the table, and they've been playing really good for us. You know, starts kind of with Trey Rakes at the point guard spot. Trey has been – with us for four years, so he understands the league. He understands what we expect, and he's continued to grow and earned his way into the starting position. And, you know, on the inside it goes with Mike Lewis, who is 6'10", long, left-handed, lean, post player, and he's getting better every night. We just got to continue to to grow him, and he'll get where he needs to be. There he goes. All right, uh, Marshall Bennett, who's a wing for us uh, from Chicago, a two-year kid, and he's finally starting to come into his own a little bit. He is a versatile player that can play inside. He can play outside. Uh, he's got to get more confident, and he's learning that. Uh, we've got some new things that we're trying to do with him offensively, and he'll bring to the table some really neat stuff for us. Uh, and then Dan Afiaki, our other post player on the inside, and Dan's growing. He's not going to ever be uh, an offensive juggernaut for us, but he rebounds, he defends, sure. he's where he's supposed to be. And he's got to put in some baskets for us, get four, five, six points a night for us along with his rebounds, and he can really impact the game a lot for us. Your returning players, a, a solid group, along with nine newcomers, and you're off to an 11 and two start. Small college basketball, uh, that's the name of the game. Sometimes you've got several newcomers coming in. Uh, tell us your thoughts. How pleased are you with the start this team's off to with so many newcomers playing significant minutes? Well, I, I wouldn't say I'm pleased. We've lost two games, and sure. we don't like to do that. Uh, but certainly our goal has always been not to be slaves to winning and losing, but to be slaves towards being relentlessly improving. And right. our guys have really bought into the fact of improvement. We've had one game, Bethel, we did not improve. We did not play well at all, and credit right. to them. They played great. And I didn't think Georgetown game we played very well, uh, but still had opportunities to win that game. We just never could turn it on. But we, we've continued to improve. We bounced back today. We had a great practice, great workout. It'll send us on the road to continue to try to improve. Of course, 11-2, uh, and two, uh, you look at that and you talk about other teams, they'd love to have that record. It is still November, but you've already played two games that are conference games. The, these games mean something, but then again, what it all comes down to is what happens in March. Uh, you're working to get to that point. How close is your team for November to being bonded, to being having the chemistry that you want? Well, the, the guys are great. They get along with each other. Uh, they have embraced our style of play. They've embraced what we're doing. We just had to clean up all of our execution. And I told you earlier, like every single detail is a teaching moment. So right. what I used to be able to kind of assume kids had because we had so many returners, we don't have that assumption anymore. We have to teach every piece of it. And we were disappointed last night after the game, came in and watched film today, and we are – extremely close and just cleaning up the small details that are going to make the ultimate difference for us and you know finishing around the rim layups we're talking about making free throws we're talking about small rotations in our zone and uh, we'll, we'll get to those points and once we do things are going to start clicking and we'll get more confident and we'll relax a little bit offensively and you'll see you'll see us start flourishing season low in points last night against Georgetown what do you attribute that to we, we couldn't find a basket we went for almost extended double digit minutes without getting a basket in the first half you know we got out to a 16 to 6 lead I think it was and we hit the dry spell the Sierra, Sierra Desert dry spell I mean sure. we could not find a free throw we could not find a layup uh, you know we're averaging giving up 63 points a game and we gave them 69 those are winnable numbers we right. just have to find the basket and our second half has been great we had two bad first halves in a row uh, we've got to figure that solution out and figure out why we're doing that but you know once we get 
you know, our confidence. We've got a young man sitting out right now that's a sniper, a great shooter that, that will obviously clean all of that up for us when he gets here. But we've got to win significant conference games, which means – coming this week to, to make sure we get where we need to be. And uh, also want to wish uh, congratulations to you. You picked up your 250th uh, college career win. Uh, that's a great accomplishment. Well, it means I've been surrounded by some great people. I've sure. had great coaches, and you're going to get to meet one of those and reintroduce Ty to everybody. Uh, but we've had great players that we share that with. And one of the statements we use all the time is tradition never graduates. And we share all of those victories with all of our kids that have ever been in the program. Uh, you know, I had a young man, Chris Lofton, was at the game last night. His cousin plays for Georgetown. And, right. you know, we look at that. We, we've, we've won about 453 games, I think it is, up to this point overall. And, sure. it, and I credit that to all those different players and coaches and staff that I've been able to work with. Indeed, a lot of uh, basketball lives impacted, a lot of lives impacted by our coach, Kelly Wells. You're tuned to the Kelly Wells Show. We're talking U-Pike basketball. It's presented by Appalachian Wireless. We are live from Buffalo Wild Wings, and we'll be back. You'll meet the associate head coach, Ty Compton, next on the Kelly Wells Show. Welcome back, everyone. The Kelly Wells Show presented by Appalachian Wireless. We come to you live from Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville, and you're invited to join us from here on out every Wednesday night here at Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville. We'll be rejoined by the coach, Kelly Wells, in just a few moments. But uh, right now, step into the Bears' den. Let's meet a member of the Bears' family and uh, a longtime member of the family entering his eighth season at UPike. That seems like yesterday. Ty Compton, a native of Grundy, Virginia, welcome to the Kelly Wells Show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Ty, you've been with the program a long time. You've, uh, you've been riding shotgun with Kelly Wells for quite some time, now an associate head coach at the University of Pikeville. And uh, let's talk about your background prior to arriving at the University of Pikeville. I mentioned a Grundy native, and uh, let's go there and talk about your basketball bra- background. I, uh, I played four years of high school basketball at Grundy, football, the whole shebang. Uh, played everything in a small school like that. You, you about have to. Um, went to college to play football, actually, at Kentucky Christian University as right. part of their first recruiting class, Coach Dane Dameron, and uh, decided that just wasn't for me. Went back home and got involved with coaching and was able to transfer back to Pikeville after I received my associate's degree back home and got in with Coach Wells and just very thankful that he allowed me to, to come in and really didn't have a reason to. Uh, sure. Just kind of – Needed help, needed free help, and uh, decided to roll the dice a little bit and, and give me an opportunity, and I'm, I'm very blessed for that. And, uh, of course, uh, now you're the associate head coach. You've been with Coach Kelly Wells for a long time. He's one that deflects a lot when you talk about Kelly Wells, over 450 career wins, Kentucky State champion, NAI national champion. He's been coach of the year practically anywhere that names coaches of the year. And uh, he's got 250 wins now in his college coaching career. A lot of victories, plus Kelly was a winner as a player. Tell us what it's like to be around Kelly Wells and uh, some of the influences that he's given you. For sure, yeah. He, he's a very influential person to be around, very humble. Um, you know, no job is too big or too small for him to do. Uh, he's been involved in every aspect. You know, we'll come in in the, in the morning. He'll beat us into work sometimes. He's doing uh, laundry when we get in there. He's... During the day, you'll you'll hear the vacuum cleaner running. He's decided he wants to, to clean the locker room. Uh, you know, he's just very, very humble, very down to earth, and uh, has an unbelievable work ethic. Very, very hard nosed, very tough, and uh, has taught me a whole lot uh, with his health issues that he's had along the way. Has, has taught me a whole lot about mental toughness and just kind of overcoming and and uh, you know just playing the hand you're dealt and making it the best you possibly can. And that's kind of what we try to do every day, no matter what has been thrown at us. We just try to make the best of it. Of course, coaching at the University of Pikeville, the recruiting never ends. Uh, I think you get Christmas Day off. That's about it, and you probably handle some of that. Not this year. No. Not this year. The text and things, it never ends. Always recruiting, and uh, it keeps you on the road quite a bit. Uh, Talk about the challenges of recruiting. Sure. We're we're able to take a little bit of time off, and it takes a little bit of a backseat during the season, especially early in the season. But uh, off season, you know, our, our recruiting goes right up until school starts. Uh, you know, we're we're scrambling to fill a last spot or two right up until the final week before uh, school officially starts. We usually have big classes to fill. It's usually mm-hmm. seven, eight, nine man classes, right. and and uh, you know that wears on you after a while. You've got to make sure you're doing your work early and and diligent. And, and right now, we'll try to recruit 
mostly high school kids right now and as their season gets started and as the season goes along gets closer to the spring and summer that's when our transfer recruiting will will amp up a little bit and we'll have a little better idea of what we're needing in those transfer spots more impact spots sure uh, by that time so it's it never ends like you said you never know uh, what kind of turnover on your own roster you're going to have whether it you know be academic whether it be uh, you know, family situation, whatever it might be, and, and those numbers are never final until that, that first day of class. And uh, a lot of newcomers to the program this year. 11-2, and two, never satisfied when you've got a couple of losses. And uh, Kelly Wells, sometimes even with a perfect start, he's still not satisfied with the way they play. 11-2, and two, you're off to a good start, not a great start. But how far has this team come? How much better can they be? We've got a long way to go, uh, but I think that the, the sky's the limit for this group. We offensively have a long way to go. I think that showed a lot last night, and it's shown in our past four or five ball games. But uh, we have a very capable group. Um, the switch in defensive style this year to more of a, a pressure zone, matchup man-to-man zone principle type thing we're doing uh, – it's took a little bit of a focus off of us developing our offense. Right. And, uh, you know, that's something that we've had to take a long, hard look at over the last couple of weeks. And I, I thought we had one of our best practices of the year today uh, after kind of regrouping after last night. So I, I think we're on the right track. I think once our offense catches up to our defense, I think this group is going to have a, a real opportunity to, to compete for a championship. Indeed. Uh, they'll be around in March. For sure. I think so. Coach Ty Compton, associate head coach, thanks for being with us tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Coach Ty Compton, associate head coach with your University of Pikeville Bears basketball team. 11-2 start. We'll step out. We'll be rejoined by our coach, Kel- Coach Kelly Wells. It's the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless. We are live from Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back in. It's the Kelly Wells Show, live from Buffalo Wild Wings, presented by Appalachian Wireless. We're rejoined by our head coach at UPike now, Coach Kelly Wells. And uh, Ty Compton uh, came to your program uh, eight years or so ago as a uh, youngster with a lot of desire, and he's developed into quite a coach. Well, he's there's a correlation between our success and having him on my staff. He's been that great. He's uh, not only a great coach, but he's also a great friend. And all of my coaches have been uh, very successful, but we've all been family. That's kind of the way we do things here, and it's no different for our players as well. But uh, my staff is incredible. They've been that way forever, every, every crew I've had. So I can't take credit for all the things we've done. We've just had a good staff. Indeed, and uh, some of your players – have gone on to coaching careers as well. Uh, several of those in the local area. We're curious to uh, see some of those in their first head coaching jobs this year. Oh, it, I, I gleam when I see those guys out there working with young sure. people because I know the influence they have uh, and, and can make with those lives. And some of those rivalries will be nice to watch as yes. a fan. And uh, I guess I'll treat them kind of as a parent side of it too. I love them to death and want to see all of them do well. But we've had some guys move on from graduate assistants to players. And uh, it, it's fun to watch them grow. And you've got a former player on your staff this year as well. Colt Chapman joins the staff. Yeah, absolutely. We're thrilled with him, and, and he'll be have an opportunity to be on the show as we go down the down the road a little bit. And, you know, Evan Faulkner is another name that people know around here from L.A. Right. County that's on our staff, and he's doing a, a, a great job for us. And uh, Coach Thomas is back in action again with us, and he continues to be great and uh, – was on my very first team here yeah. and thankful to have him by my side. Brings a lot of energy oh, we everywhere love, he goes. We love Coach Don, and we're thankful that he's with us. Indeed. Coach, uh, let's get a quick scouting report. To you go to Marietta, Georgia. You head out tomorrow, Thursday night matchup at Life University. Uh, tell us about that one. They're going to be very athletic, very long. Uh, Keith Atkins is now the coach there who was at Campbellsville. Right. And, uh, we've been watching a lot of them grow. They've, they've, they've moved along. They had a great overtime win against Lindsey Wilson, turned around with another late game. Uh, win at Cumberland, uh, Tennessee. So they're 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 coming along, and Keith will get them going. A great friend, and certainly a great coach. And we'll have to be ready to play. They've got the Williams kid who's returning, uh, All American for them, and he's they they focus around him. And uh, we've got to do a great job of covering him. Uh, our zone's got to be very good. It's got to be very active, and we we have a hard time playing there. I mean, it's just a tough place to play, and our guys will have to be ready. And I think they're up for the challenge and want to respond from our our loss against Georgetown. Uh, Eleven and two heading into that one. It's an important matchup, no doubt. But then two weeks off. Uh, talk about that with your what, how that affects your team. Well, it's finals, so we've got study days and we've got finals exams, and that's the most important thing in their life at that moment. And they've got to they've got to do a great job with that. Just like we expect them to prepare for games, we expect them to prepare uh, for the academic side of things. So uh, we let them have a lot of that time to kind of. Uh, gauge where they're at, studying they need groups and study halls and all the extra things that they have to do as a student athlete. And 
uh, hopefully it's great success for them. Of course, uh, they get a lot of time for study hall, working on academics, focusing there, but they don't take basketball off completely. Uh, no, I, 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 I can't do that. I've got to let, them, let yeah. them get in the gym a little bit. But we are much wiser during that time, and, and class schedules are a little bit different. They're spread out more, so we can try to find individual time to show them tape and video, and it's a great learning time. Uh, that we're going to take advantage of. It's, this group really needs it, and we're, we're going to spend some time making sure that they excel uh, not only there but also improve on the basketball court. You've got a couple of weeks uh, off till Bob Jones, and then you make your Florida trip after Christmas. Uh, talk about that, how that helps in recruiting. Well, it, it does. Uh, it, it helps in recruiting, but it helps us in team chemistry. That's why we do it. Uh, we don't do it for any other reason. We want to get down there and get to know each other even better. Uh, we we kind of know the bumps in the road that we've had the first semester, and it gives us a chance just to get away, be us, get away from parents, families, everybody, and just uh, really rub elbows together on a daily basis, eat meals together, travel together, on a bus together. It just everything's us, uh, and it really gives us a chance to bond and gel as a group. Absolutely. Much like uh, any group of family or friends, uh, you spend time together, you uh, learn each other very well. And uh, obviously, obviously that chemistry, even guys that get along, they need that time together to be prepared for the stretch run to go to war with each other in March. Well, no question. And, and you know, other than talent, I always say chemistry is probably the second most important thing you can have. And uh, those guys have really liked each other. They've enjoyed each other's company. We as coaches have enjoyed them as well. We just have to continue uh, to, to improve and have that, what we say, the relentless approach to improvement. And that's, that's where it's at. Coach, let's get a win Thursday night at Life. Oh, I can't wait. We're excited about it. We, we're looking forward to the opportunity. You've been tuned to the Coach Kelly Wells Show, uh, talking U-Pike basketball from here on out every Wednesday night at Buffalo Wild Wings in Pikeville. Next broadcast at Marietta, Georgia, Thursday night as the Bears travel to Life University, and we will be there to bring it to you. Live coverage begins at 745 on Z1075. Thanks for tuning in to the Kelly Wells Show, presented by Appalachian Wireless.